In this video, you're going to see how to deploy the Flutter demo project to Flutter Web. This is going to be using a custom domain. It's all going to be deployed and hosted for free using GitHub pages. So let's get right into it. As you can see, we just have the basic Flutter demo project as a brand new Flutter project, and we're just going to do the deploy with this. So you can see we have a Flutter web examples repository here, and this can be on GitHub. You'll most likely have your project on GitHub, so I'll just initialize this, basically just create the public repository for this. And this will kind of be useful later because we're actually gonna end up with two GitHub repositories. So I wanna make sure that you are understanding which repository is which. So again, this Flutter example web is going to be your actual Flutter project, not the deployed version on the web. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and create our web version. And to do that, we're just going to run a simple command, which is going to be flutter build web. And then we're going to add the release flag because we do want to deploy this. And what this does here is it generates a new project here under build and web. And you'll see it is basically our same flutter project, but it's generated as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is what we actually want to deploy to the web. And we're going to be doing that with GitHub pages. So the next step is actually gonna to be to create a new repository on GitHub. So again, this is going to be separate from the repository that this entire project is in, which is called Flutter Web Example. We're going to create a new repository and we can just call this Flutter Website. So you can name this whatever you want, but this do note is a different name than our entire Flutter project. So this is going to be the actual deployed Flutter web example. This will need to be public if you want to use GitHub pages unless you are a premium GitHub user. And we're just going to create this repository. So now our new repository is created. And to get this deployed on GitHub pages, we really just need to get that Flutter web code into this repository. We're going to keep a couple notes here in the readme. I cleared out everything else. So we already know we're going to be creating this release with the Flutter build web release flag. And that is going to generate our actual files that we want to push up to GitHub. But this file is actually a temporary file and folder. So if we do run a Flutter clean, you're going to see that this build folder is completely removed. That is expected. We don't want to actually store that in GitHub for the project, the Flutter web examples project, but it does add an extra step to us when we're deploying the web version. So kind of our deploy process is gonna start with a Flutter clean. Then we're going to run a Flutter pub get, which is simply just going to re-get our packages. And then once we have that run, we can run the Flutter build web release, and that'll simply generate that web version again. Once we have that web version, we can then add it to our Git repository here. So we're going to actually initialize the repository within the build web. So we're going to change the directory to build web. And now within here, we're going to git init. So again, this is a CD to build web, and then we'll run the git init. Now we wanna add basically all the files within here. So we can just do a git add all, and I'll keep these notes up here. After that, we can commit everything. For now, we'll do a commit with a message of deploy one. Next, we are going to set the branch to main, and then we're going to add the remote origin. So this remote origin is going to be what is right here, the git add remote origin for the new Flutter website, git. And then last, we're going to push this up to GitHub. This is good. So our web version now should be on GitHub. If we refresh, our deploy one is here. And now we can go over into settings and then go to pages. And now we can set up the GitHub pages, which will actually deploy our site from this repository. So we are gonna be deploying from branch and then we're gonna select the branch as main and then hit save there. And this is going to set up our site on GitHub pages. So if we go back to the main page here, you can see that our site is being deployed currently. All right, so we are deployed now. If we go back into the settings and then pages, we should see our site is viewable at this link right here. So if we go ahead and visit the site, you'll see it appears to work. It's just a blank white screen. 
And this is expected at this point. There will be some errors over here in the console if you look at those. So we're gonna go back over into Visual Studio Code. And the problem we're having here, if we look in our code, is the index. If you find the index file, basically if you read this comment that's in the head that's auto-generated, it's telling us that this base href here is just the root directory. But if you look at what we have deployed, our our root directory is actually called Flutter website because it's the name of our GitHub directory. So you might think you can kind of just remove this, but now GitHub pages doesn't know what you have deployed. So this is actually kind of an easy fix. All we need to do is set the href to here. But again, this code is always regenerated each time we run the Flutter build command. But luckily we can pass this base href in. So if we go back into our readme where we have our Flutter build web we can have this extra flag for the base href, and then our base href is going to be this Flutter website, or mine is. Whatever you ended up naming your GitHub repository, you're going to pull this and put it right here. You want to also make sure that it begins and ends with the slash. Now we can redeploy our app. So to redeploy it, we actually have to rebuild the whole thing doing all of this, and there are a few things that you're going to notice along the way. So we'll start by running the Flutter clean, then we'll run the Flutter pub get, and I am still in the web directory, so I need to go back to my main directory here, so I can run the Flutter pub get from here. Once that's done, we will run this new release command, and that will regenerate our Flutter web build. All right, now we're going to change into that build web directory. We're going to reinitialize git because again, the one we had before was already removed. So we're, we're redoing all the steps we did before because we regenerated this build web. We'll add all of those new files. This we're going to be called deploying. This we'll call deploy two, so we can update that. And now we're going to set that remote repository and we'll try and push this up again. But since we had already pushed this code before, you're going to see that the push actually doesn't really work. It's failing it because we do have code in the repository now. It's not an empty repository. So basically GitHub is saying, what do you actually want us to do here? Do you want us to push this new code or you need to pull down the old changes, make changes and then push that? However, since we are kind of using this GitHub repository as a way just to deploy our app and we're not really using this to track our code changes, we're going to overwrite the current state of it. So this current state of it here, which is one commit, we're going to overwrite this with the new version that we just created here. And we can do this by simply adding a force flag here. And this is basically just going to force push our current changes to this remote repository and overwrite the existing ones. So if you write this now with the force, you're going to see it does actually push it up to GitHub. And now we're going to expect our deploy two to be the commit that's there. And actually our deploy one commit will be gone. So if we refresh this, you'll see everything just says deploy two, and this is deploying. You'll also notice if you check the commits, there's no longer that deploy one commit because we completely overwrote basically this whole entire repository. That's okay for this. I wouldn't recommend doing that in a repository that you're not using specifically just for GitHub pages deploys. But in our case here, this works great. Once this deploy finishes, which you'll know is done once there's a green check here, we can go back and revisit our website. And since we updated it to have that href, you'll see we do now have our site working. And this is of course just the demo site but this is what we would expect. So the site is deployed right now. At this point, if you just want to get something up and running on a GitHub URL, then you could be done with the video now. But if you want to stick around, I'm going to show you how to automate this process and then also use a custom domain. So every time you want to deploy a new version to the web, you don't necessarily want to run all these commands. You maybe just want to run one command that does all this for you. And we can set that up actually pretty simply with a make file. 
So we're going to add a new file to the top level here, and it's going to be called make file. It's just make file with no extensions. And this make file is going to be for deploying Flutter web to GitHub pages. I'm going to start by setting these three variables. The first one is going to be that base href, which back in our readme, we have all the information we need. This is our base href right here. So that is going to be placed there. Next is going to be the git repo, and that is what is defined right here. And then last, this build version, this command here is going to look at our pubspec.yaml and find the version. So in pubspec.yaml, we have this version here, and it's set to 1.0.0 plus 1. And this we're going to use in our commit message. So instead of saying deploy to, it's basically going to say something like deploy version and then have the version number. So that is why we're going to be using that build version there. Next, we're going to define what we're going to be doing. So we're going to call this deploy web. And this is simply what you'll call, which will contain the steps you want to run. So we can first print out using echo that we're going to clean the existing repository. And then to do that, we can go back into the readme and simply copy this, which is going to be that Flutter clean. Once we did that, we're going to, of course, run the Flutter pub get. So we can put another message that we're getting the packages and that will be using the Flutter pub get. The echo notes here will just kind of show up while it's running. So you can choose how you want to add those. The next thing is we're going to actually run the build command here. So let's copy that over and then also put the echo for that. Now here we have our, our build command, but we don't want to hard code this. We want to use the variable that we created up above. So to use that base href, all we need to do is replace this with the dollar sign and then the parentheses and use that variable there. This makes it easier later. If you need to change anything, you kind of just change these few variables. And now we can set up the deploying to the actual repository. I'm just going to drop this code in and then I will explain it. It's the same stuff we're doing in the readme here. We're first going to change that directory because we just built this so we will have the directory. Initialize the git repository for this directory, add all the changes, commit it, and we're going to deploy version and then we have that build version. Last, we'll create that branch and then add the remote repo, which is defined right there. And then we will do that force push. Once this is done, we're going to just change the directory back to where we were, which since we went to build web, we'll just switch back out those two directories. And finally, we're going to just put a little message that says that the deploy is finished. You also need to add this one line to the make file, which just tells it that this deploy web is not the name of the file. It's just the name of this function that you want to run. And once we save this, we can go back to our main route here. And let's go ahead and just change something so we know that when it's deployed, something different has been deployed. And we're just going to go ahead and change this color to deep orange instead of deep purple. And now we can run this whole command to deploy it. And you simply run make and then deploy web. And you'll see it's, it's printing out those notes. So it's cleaning the repository and then it runs the Flutter clean. And all the stuff that you would normally see when you run those commands manually are still going to run right here in your terminal. So that is another thing to note. This is meant to be run locally. Essentially how you would run all these commands manually. This is just a way to not have to input all these different commands. But now that that's finished, you'll see we get our finished deploy. And if we go back over to GitHub, we would expect this to change to be that deployed version, which it is. And once that finishes deploying, we can reload our page. And if our changes are applied, we would expect the purple to change to the deep orange. If it doesn't change immediately for you, you might have to clear your cache, which you can inspect your page here and then right click and empty cache and hard reload but it should reload for you and the color should change so this is good now we have a way to deploy pretty quickly with just one line and the last thing we're going to do is put this on a custom domain so i'm going to show you how to do that with a subdomain and i'll be using namecheap to do this in combination with the github pages in the github pages settings here you can scroll down to the custom domain and if you click learn more 
click on the managing a custom domain, there's going to be two kind of big steps to do within Namecheap. So the first one is going to be to add a C name. If you go into Namecheap and go to your domain, and I'll just deploy this on a subdomain of the one man startup domain, and then you wanna to go to advanced DNS, click add new record, and you're going to find the C name record. And for the host here, you're gonna put whatever subdomain you want. For me, I'll put this at Flutter web example, which will mean that the website will be flutterwebexample.onemanstartup.com. This is where I'll ultimately end up going. So Flutter web example is what I'm going to use for this value. And then the target here is gonna be whatever your current deployed preface is here on the GitHub pages. So it's typically your username.github.io. So that will be the target. And that is the CNAME record. So go ahead and save that. Next, you're going to, if you scroll down a little bit more on this page, you'll see the four A name records to add. And you do need to add all four of these. And I've already added these, but they'll look like this. You'll use the at symbol for the host, and then you add all four of those. If you're not using Namecheap, it's essentially the same thing, whichever provider you're using. You just need the four A records and then the one C name. Now, if we go back over into the GitHub pages settings, we can take that URL that we created, and we can paste that in here, remove the HTTPS and the backslash at the end. So it should just be whatever the subdomain is, and then dot your main domain. So you can see that the DNS check was successful. This is good. Now we should be able to reload this site and you'll see it does reload. But now if you inspect the page, you'll notice we have those same errors here. And that is because our root href is now just a backslash. It's not that entire Flutter website like it used to be. So we can fix this simply by going back into our deploy script and remove that custom base href and just make it a single backslash. And this will allow us to deploy it correctly. However, there's another thing to note here when using a custom domain and this setup with our make script is that if you go into the pages here and go to the code, you're actually gonna notice that there was a additional commit that was made since we added that custom domain. You'll see we now have two commits, and that second commit was actually just to add one file called CNAME, and it will give us what our current custom domain is. And this is important to note because when we rerun that make file, it's going to clear out all these commits and basically overwrite it without this CNAME. And if we don't have this CNAME file, it's basically the same thing as removing our custom domain from the pages entirely it would be as if we removed this. So I'm going to basically add this CNAME within the make file. We're gonna do it before we deploy to Git. And I'll add a comment here, and then we're going to create another variable up here just to hold that custom domain name. There, we want it to look actually exactly like it looks in the CNAME itself, which is right here. And now what we are going to do is we're just going to create a new file and you can do that with the echo command. Now that is different than the at echo, which is going to just give you kind of notes in the terminal. This is going to actually create a file if you use the custom domain and then give it the file path. So we're gonna be echoing that custom domain into the file path. So now that we made those two changes to the base href and the custom domain, let's go ahead and redeploy this. And just so that we can also test that our version is changing, let's go ahead and update this to build number two and then run the make deploy web. All right, so that finished deploying. So this is good. You can see the C name was added in our new version and it does have our actual custom domain. And then if we go to that custom domain, we we'll expect the app to actually load up, and it does. So this is good. You'll also notice we're getting that not secure here. If you go back to the settings and the pages, and then scroll down a little bit, actually you can just enforce HTTPS, and if you just check that, it will change this to require that HTTPS, which it will take a little bit for it to fully update, but if we go to the inspect and maybe clear the cache out and reload it. You'll see now it is reloading on 
the HTTPS. So this is good. Everything is deployed on our custom domain. Hopefully you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one.